Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. and I am the Smoke Champ, baby. And coming to you today again from the Smoke Champ here. Let me tell y'all a little something about the Fat Man. When the Fat Man was fucking with Doc Gambino, he didn't need no money, just his word. Whatever he asked Doc for, Doc gave him and he sent the money back to New York. And let me tell y'all something else. If he hadn't got busted or didn't get busted, the shit you niggas do talking about, hey man, I'm a few dollars short on this one and let me bring it back to you, Doc Gambino didn't play that shit because he knew the dope he was giving you was so strong you shouldn't be short. And if you was short talking about that, let me bring it back to you on the next pack of shit and you hadn't been busted, you would lose your plug. Doc would spin your ass off. You wouldn't see Doc no more talking about, let me bring it back. And let me tell y'all something else about the fat man so all of y'all niggas will know how he ran shit and ran shit truly. He didn't need no money to get with Doc Gambino, just his word. And let me also say this. My father said every package he got, he made sure the next one would be bigger. So every time he copped, he copped more than he had copped the previous time he copped from him. So Doc Gambino, love, my father said, if you cop something and you ain't putting nothing with it and growing, you really ain't about your business. Pop said every time he copped a package, it was bigger than the last package he copped. And let me tell y'all something else. How he used to school Demetrius with the Colombians that he turned him on to. First of all, the deal that he got Demetrius, I wonder if any of you niggas out there getting it. They was fronting him a hundred keys and the fourth key was his off every motherfucking package. When he sell one, two, three, the fourth one was his because the first key was to pay for the package. The next key was the big fella's profit in the packer. The next key was for the smuggler. And then that last key was for the nigga putting them out here on the streets in Detroit. So that's the kind of deal Demetrius had. I wonder how many of these niggas got that kind of deal. Or is niggas running around like they do? This is how niggas do here. Niggas run around and get your 100000 Then he'll run around to this nigga get his 100000 Then he'll run around to that nigga and get his 100000 and then he'll go to the Mexican with the three or four hundred thousand, but it's actually from three or four different niggas. That's how they do shit now. They don't do the shit like the fat man did it. Every package was bigger. And it wasn't no running around collecting money from Joe Blow and Anthony Sam. Now you need his hundred thousand, his hundred thousand to cop, plus your hundred thousand. And then niggas want to play like they on the level that them guys was on. Man, them guys didn't need no money. Let me tell you something about them guys, man, Demetrius and Maserati Rick. Totally different from you niggas today. Let me tell you something. Demetrius was talking to my father. He said, Eddie, I want to get the price lower. He said, Demetrius, the only way you get the price lower is you buy more. Understand, when you buy more, a nigga respect you. If you moved a thousand keys this time, you move two thousand the next time. If you move two thousand that time, the next time, nigga, you move three thousand keys. Eddie Jackson was always coming up and he never copped the same goddamn package. His package was always bigger and Doc Gambino on them loved that because it was a nigga on the move. Here's a nigga just buying one key. Every time you see him, one key, one key, one key. Every time you see this nigga, he buying mo and mo and mo. God damn it, wasn't no one key. Multiple keys. And then let me just explain to you niggas selling cocaine back in that day why it wasn't nothing but a play drug for Eddie Jackson. Cocaine wasn't nothing but something to play with for him. Because cocaine wasn't worth enough for him to sell. He said, that shit ain't even worth my motherfucking time to sell. You got one motherfucking key. Okay, big shot. I take one key of my shit. When it's all the way right, 
I can make 20, 10, whatever the fuck I feel like, let the nigga on the little end make. See, my father was about this. I'm going to always leave some room for the nigga on the bottom, like Pep. That's why the dope was so good for Pep, because my father had a rule, because he came from the streets, hand-to-hand combat. So he would always leave some room for the niggas down below him, so they could pay for lawyer fees, pay the crew, get lawyers, whatever would come up. But if a nigga don't leave you no room, how the fuck you going to bail a nigga out of jail when this nigga taking all the fat out of the package? That's what these niggas doing to him now with fentanyl. Some shit you can cut a thousand times. You nigga taking some shit you can't even cut one time because you didn't allow the Mexican to prepare it for you. Oh, I done made it where you ain't got to worry about cutting it. I'm sure of that. I made it so you don't have to worry about cutting it. I'm sure of that. And there will be no PC for you either. There will be no profit since you ain't cutting it. There won't be no profit for your ass either. One trick pony. One track mine. Understand that. A one trick pony and a one track mind. What the fuck is that? A nigga can't even chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. A nigga can't even chew bubble gum and walk at the same motherfucking time. That's what the fuck we got going on out here. Niggas who can't even walk and chew bubble gum but want to poke their chest out like they hell of a fellas. And niggas snitching so much, the streets ain't shit but a motherfucking snitch fest now. That's all the motherfucking streets is, a snitch fest. And let me just tell y'all something else. When Pops was telling Demetrius, you want to get a lower ticket, nigga, you got to move more. You ain't moving enough to get a lower ticket. A hundred keys ain't shit, nigga. You got to move a thousand. And after you get a thousand, you need to get two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, six, all the way up and keep rolling, baby. Ain't no shut off switch. When you fucking with the fat man, we going to store these motherfucking keys. We going to stack keys to the motherfucking ceiling and we going to stack money to the ceiling as well. We going to stack keys to the ceiling. He used to tell this brother St. Clair, another famous brother that hustled in Detroit by the name of St. Clair. St. Clair seen me at the barbershop. He said, hey, baby, yo, daddy, you said, nigga, I'm stacking keys from the floor to the ceiling. And this comes from a brother by the name of St. Clair, who is a Detroiter in the streets getting money as well as with the fat man. But he said, a fat man used to just come out and tell a nigga, I got keys stacked all the way from the motherfucking floor to the ceiling. I got money stacked all the way from the flow to the ceiling. And that's how the fat man did it. You better know that. And I just want to say one thing. When a nigga like that be talking to you and that's your motherfucking mentor, this what Demetrius did. Well, okay, Eddie, you say I got to move more motherfucking keys to get a cheaper ticket. And this is just what he did. Brother Demetrius, and I want y'all all to know this because he fucked a lot of niggas up he fucked the streets up. Just imagine this. Eight balls was costing $300 at this time. Imagine, you had went out last night and you bought your hookup for the day. You bought your eight ball for $300. You finna get out here and hustle and move the crowd. Then you this other brother who was trying to catch up last night, but you couldn't catch up. A nigga told you, wait till tomorrow. A nigga was telling you wait till tomorrow because he finna give you a real motherfucking surprise. So my man then bought this eight ball last night for $300. The next day, Demetrius shattered the motherfucking prices in the street. Prices was going for $300 an eight ball. Demetrius bought them bitches down to $100 for an eight ball. So imagine that nigga who had the 300 waiting to get one, get an eight ball the next day. Nigga, he was able to get three. And imagine the nigga who bought the one eight ball last night for 300. He was catching the motherfucking flux. 
Because not everybody paying a hundred in the size of the rocks got much bigger. So that nigga who paid 300 and all the niggas who bought keys at last night price for that higher ticket. When that nigga came in that next day, bought that motherfucking ticket down on them niggas buying eight balls and keys. He shattered niggas. He shattered niggas in the streets. Became a hated man. That motherfucking DH. That son of a bitch that bought the motherfucking price down to $100. And I bought eight balls for 300 last night. Now I'm stuck with this shit. Well, I'm finna take a loss. You goddamn right you finna take a loss. Because this nigga got three eight balls for $300. And you got one. Now how you gonna possibly compete with that? That's what some niggas faced, and some niggas hated Demetrius behind that shit. This nigga done fucked the streets up, man. This nigga done brought the price down to motherfucking $100 an eight ball. That's the cheapest price I ever seen for cocaine on the streets in America at that time, and Ronald Reagan was president. We was getting ounces of cane cheaper than ever in the lifetime I had lived. Ounces nigga was costing me about $300 at that time. I was pushing them for four and five. That's how cheap the cocaine got under Ronald Reagan and Demetrius Holloway taking mo and mo and mo. If you want to lower the ticket, nigga, move mo. Don't come back asking me for a lower ticket and you keep coming back getting one motherfucking key, nigga. If you want a lower ticket, try buying a thousand of them motherfuckers. Perhaps two thousand or maybe even five thousand like my man Felix Walls was over there clowning doing. Five thousand at a time. Understand that. So you know a nigga like that can control the prices on the streets. What do you think a nigga like Felix Walls used to do? Control the prices on the streets. A nigga getting it like that. Okay, nigga, you selling them for 500 I'm letting the bitches go for three. Now, what the fuck you going to do? Get back, step back, and as Donald Trump say, proud boys, stand back and step aside because the real deal is stepping through the motherfucking lane right now. The fat man, Eddie Jackson, with that hair on. Laughing at you niggas out here moving one key and he take one key and make it into 20 keys and take that one key after he made it into 20 keys and sell it for more than that one key of cocaine you got. So after he make it into 20 keys, each one of them can be sold for more than what the fuck you selling that one key of cocaine for PC wise. You ain't making no profit selling cocaine. You ain't doing nothing but handling a lot of somebody else's money. Chop, chop, El Chapo's money. Pablo Escobar's money. Back then, them niggas was handling money fucking with Pablo, baby. Because he was giving up. Every fourth key was yours, and you didn't have to have no money if he was a real nigga. If your word was your word, nigga, you didn't need no money. You needed your word. You didn't have to pay another nigga's bill off to get no connect. You had to have a good motherfucking word, and you could get a connect anytime. You better know that. In my father's day, it was about your word, nigga. If your word was gold, you was gold. But if your word was shit in the streets, you was shit in the streets. And niggas know that from back in that time and back in that day. Because that was the golden era of niggas getting money in the streets. You better know that was the golden time and the golden era. Fucking with that Finch Connection job. That French Connection job wasn't nothing like it. Coming straight out, China White, 95, 99%. And I've always told y'all, and I'm going to leave y'all on this. If you had 100% pure brown dope Mexican mud, and you had 100% pure China White, China White will always be better. Because that goddamn Mexican mug going to be crawling on you. All that bullshit. And I just want to leave y'all niggas on one thing. And I'm going to leave y'all niggas on this. And I'm going to go and get off the mic. But let me just say this. Cash App 
Eddie Baby 22 and I got some shout outs and some thanks to give to you and they coming on my next video. That's a promise. My brother who just cashed out me $20, I'm coming at you and I hope you're having a nice day and I got to shout you out. So cash out Eddie Baby 22 and I'm going to start shouting out everybody who didn't cash out Eddie Baby 22. Chris Bailey, thank you for signing up over there on America Real True Street Crime on Patreon. And look right down below you. You can find me over there on America Real True Street Crime on Patreon because we finna heat it up over there just like we heating it up right here on America Real True Street Crime on YouTube. And definitely do this if you ain't did it. Go over there on Spotify, Crime Town Kingpin's Kids. Spotify. Crime Town, Kingpin's Kid, and let Ryan Gear Valley rap to you for a while. Understand, let the actual FBI officer, that Big Bear Cola, the magic fat man, Mr. President, was playing with. That's the officer that named the fat man his crew. Ryan Gear Valley's crew is the crew that named the fat man Eddie Jackson. Mr. President and Felix Walls witnessed it. So you better subscribe, share, and like, and get your motherfucking script over there on Patreon because we coming with some show enough, show enough, show enough shit over there on America, real true street crime on Patreon. And let me just leave y'all niggas on this thought. And this was one from Demetrius. Would you rather deal with Colombians buying cocaine or would you rather deal with Mexican buying cocaine? The Colombians are the pipeline and you dealing direct. If you dealing with Mexicans selling you cocaine, the Mexicans cut you right the fuck out. The Mexicans dealt with the Colombians, cut the cocaine, and bought it back to you niggas. See, that's the difference. That shit Demetrius was selling had ether in it. And the, 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 the government made ether illegal altogether. See, ether, what you niggas really don't know, is the stimulant that had niggas dick getting hard back in the 60s and 70s. See, back in the 60s and 70s, when you used to blow, blow cocaine, you used to be a freak. Your dick would be hard than a rock. Your dick wouldn't get hard, get soft, nigga. It'd be hard as a rock. A bitch be like, God damn, nigga. But this is what happened. The government took the ether out of cocaine and made it illegal to even sell or process ether. Because ether was the shit that had you niggas dick getting hard. Now, niggas in my day used to come to the crack house with all the holes there. Bitch, I'm finna fuck. I want some pussy. And after he hit that first rock, that nigga was limp noodle. He wasn't going to fuck nothing. He was spend spend his whole check. Then after the nigga get broke, oh, bitch, you got to give me some pussy. Nigga, I was here to give you some pussy when we started. Now it's time to move on because you broke. And I seen the motherfucking cocaine take pimps out of the game. I seen pimps standing out at my motherfucking joint screaming and yelling, hey, bitch, come out of there. Bitch, come out of there. Because, see, this is what fucked the pimp up. A bitch wasn't finna go sell herself and let you smoke the crack up. You smoking crack and she smoking crack. Now, you think this bitch finna go out and sell herself and come back and let you do all the crack smoking. Them bitches flipped the script. Crack flipped the whole motherfucking script. Them bitches be in the house smoking. I'm like, blood, you can't be out here with that. You got to wait. Till she come out. Well, I even tell nigga she ain't. There. I just seen her back. She ain't in there. She went out the back door because she knew you was with her. And that bitch be down there in the basement smoking like a motherfucker. And he out there sucking sour socks, thinking a bitch finna sell her pussy and give him the money to go smoke some motherfucking cracks. Them bitches pull the Lulu on you motherfucking pimps. Ain't no motherfucking pimps no more. Nigga, I'm the pimp with the bag. The crack is the pimp now, nah, nigga. I done replaced you. I'm doing the pimping now, nah, nigga. When she go out and get the trick, she bring him right in here. Me and her milk that nigga for the whole check. Angie was one of the best at it. Angie, my girl Angie. 
and fats and when I had all the hoes under my line, uh, on my line and on my team. And them bitches used to bring the tricks right there, go down in the basement. Them niggas wouldn't leave till they was broke. Understand that. So the party girls made the party go even longer and faster. But just remember this. If you want some pussy, get the pussy before you start smoking crack. Because once you start smoking crack, you ain't going to fuck nothing, Jack. And that's a fact. So really, cash out Eddie Baby 22 because I'm giving all you niggas out there getting high some motherfucking knowledge. So you might as well go on and send a nigga a few dollars, two dollars, if nothing else, for the knowledge I'm getting you. So if you want some pussy and you smoking crack, get the pussy before you smoke crack. Because once you start smoking crack, you ain't getting no pussy. And that's a fact, Jack. So I'm out. Cash out Eddie Baby 22 Subscribe, share, like. And thank you too. And from the smoke champ, god damn it, I got to line that goddamn weed up like the fat man used to line them goddamn keys up. So as I say to all of y'all, Demetrius fucked a whole lot of niggas up and put a whole lot of niggas out of business when he went from motherfucking 300 to 108 ball. Now, can you imagine that? Last night you went to sleep, bought your eight ball, hooked it up for 300 so you can get up in the morning and go out there and hustle. But when you woke the fuck up, you got a major motherfucking surprise. Eight balls is a hundred motherfucking dollars. Thanks to Demetrius Holloway and definitely Maserati Rick, baby. So that's one to grow on. How we brought the cane down, the prices of cocaine down in the streets of Detroit. Now, who else did that but Brother D.H.? Understand, Brother D. We brought the motherfucking prices down from 300 to 100. What you think about that? And we out.